Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets webinar. My name is Chris. Today, we're going to take a look at strategy using uh, basically uh, technical analysis, looking at the market structure and the concept of the path of least resistance, which means that I'm taking a look basically uh, at where price is most likely headed, where are the ups and downs, where are the bounces and breaks, and basically making a roadmap for myself uh, and trying to see which part of that roadmap is interesting to trade. So before we dive in today, in today's topic, be aware of this disclaimer. It shows, first of all, that uh, this webinar is for global or is shown to a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at admiralmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more information on that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange or global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent, independent financial advisor to find out if it is suitable for you. Uh, also, be aware that uh, this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. So basically, using market structure uh, rides on four things. First of all, using the trend of momentum for uh, understanding the flow. Second, looking for patterns, basically, uh, chart patterns, candlestick patterns, divergence patterns, Fibonacci patterns. Thirdly, understanding where support and resistance are is so by using these three concepts trend and momentum one patterns two three support or resistance that's looking at market structure when you combine those then you get a, a good idea about what is most likely going to be the path of least resistance and which areas seem the most interesting to trade once I have you know a path set up let's say uh, sometimes it's not clear but sometimes it is I think uh, you know, more clear than other times. When I do see uh, clarity, that's when I start to look for invalidation levels, confirmation levels, and what kind of triggers at those decision zones am I uh, looking to trade. That's then the trade plan, basically. So I got the analysis first, and then based on that, if there is something to trade, I make the plan, and then uh, I, of course, then have to trade that plan. That's the last step. All right, so with that said, Let's take a quick look at the calendar here. We got a couple of, or a lot of, central bank presidents and governors speaking this week. Otherwise, we don't have anything uh, of, you know, particular importance that's necessary this week. Of course, we have always a lot of news events coming up uh, with the various significance. For instance, here we had consumer confidence in Germany it was marked red, tad lower than the forecasted. One of those speeches that is coming up is ECB President Draghi. And you got some other lighter, medium, heavy news. Doable goods is heavy. Uh, Yalen is Fed President, Governor, is testifying. So take a look at that. Before I look at the charts, though, wanted to let you know of this uh, extra kind of opportunity here. Uh, but there is a time limit because it's uh, open up to, I think, October the 3rd. So what is it? Well, it's called Zero to Hero, Learn to Trade in 21 Days. So basically, Nenet and I are taking you along a, a month-long course, and it's uh, basically taking you from you know the baby steps to some advanced concepts. Obviously, you know it's it's impossible to cover everything obviously in, in 21 sessions, right? But I think we did a we did do a good bunch. I think we did really. Uh, cover a lot of ground, but more importantly, I think it's a good structure to to start. It takes care of, you know, it discusses risk management and trading psychology, but also explains the trading system uh, in it. So it already gives you kind of a blueprint uh, how to start, even if you're really starting um, from from this point on. If you just this is your first webinar ever, right? Then this would be uh, also good for you, uh, even if it's even if you've been been trading already. For longer for a year or two I think it's still uh, very useful now if you've been trading for 10 years no probably not I mean it could be some parts could still be useful right but uh, you would have to cherry-pick the things that uh, are could be beneficial for you so it's divided in five parts it talks about market tools platform system and risk and psychology and then it's subdivided again into 21 days now I believe that registration, 
I'm not sure. You have to take a look exactly how to register and who can register. Um, let's see. It's, yeah, but anyhow, it's launched on October 3rd. So that is, let me see, October the 3rd is next week, Monday. So that's pretty fast. So there's not much time. So take a look. I will pause the video if you're interested, you know, if you're looking at the recording later on. If you're live in this uh, webinar, I'll just place the link in the chat. Let me open the chat box, by the way. Let me see if there are any questions. Ah, the course. Well, the, the course itself, uh, we made basically the course uh, already. The course is basically, uh, has been designed, uh, has been, and, and recorded uh, this month. So besides the last day, everything will be presented in 20-minute videos. The last day is a live session. So that then we will go through, you know, you'll go through the course 20 days, you'll have 20-minute segments, and then at the end you'll can ask live questions in uh, day 21. Uh, the 20-minute segments, uh, we, you know, 20 minutes was chosen because it's, it's the optimal kind of length of a, a speech or a, or a presentation. 18 minutes. You know, TED Talks, by any chance, those are around, those are strictly 18 minutes. Those were, it, it's, it's a magical number where people are fully engaged without kind of losing the focus, without uh, too much mind wandering, without getting distracted, basically. Uh, it forces the presenter also to kind of put in, you know, the, the information that, it's most crucial without getting into a lot of details necessarily. So I think it's an ideal length for, for this type of uh, format. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly when it will be presented, though. I'm not sure if, if traders are able to watch those videos at any time. I guess so. That would be my guess. But I, I don't know for sure, though. So, yeah, the market yesterday. Well... Pound made that upside. We were talking about it yesterday. That I, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, London Open, that the market makes an up, a down, and an up. Do you remember that? So it kind of followed my words pretty neatly, I would say. And uh, you know, that was a, a good, that was a good forecast. I guess it was a, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly that uh, precise, but it did turn out that way. I was saying like I would be looking for a buy here. I think that that could be a good buying zone. Because I wouldn't be surprised to, to find support, basically at uh, at these fibs. I was thinking with the 50 fib, it went a bit lower, went down to the 78.6 fib. Uh, hopefully, it didn't get stopped out. I mean, the fib itself, the stop loss should typically be below the bottom. Uh, you know, that is the safest. If you use these fibs, and hopefully, you went below the 78.6 fib. Um, I'm not sure what we discussed at that point regarding stop loss, but. If we did discuss it, but uh, yeah, it did bounce, and we got that that daily rally. So we had the false break here, the move like this, and then up. Does anyone remember that by any chance? At this point, or did anyone trade it by any chance? The upside here, pound made from the 50 fib, it moved up 60, and from the 78.6 fib, it moved about 78. Great, Dogon managed to catch it. Excellent. Good job. So now I think that uh, price is at a pretty important point. Uh, we got a trend line here. And uh, we could see the break. Let's see. Dogan could not wait till 130.20. I think we mentioned, that was the target we mentioned yesterday. I, I, to be honest, it's, I'm a bit fuzzy about what target that we were talking about. I think we had these two fibs on. It must be having these two fibs. And uh, let's see. 130, 20 indeed. Well, I, 130, 30. Okay. Yeah, because I, I actually got out earlier as well. I, uh, I didn't manage to 130.30, so I don't remember. Let's see, 130.30. 30. 
Okay, I'm not sure exactly. Maybe that was the minus 272 target. Yeah, that was probably it. 130.32. Okay. So, yeah, no problem. I mean, for me, 130.30, I was also a level that I was still uh, scared of. So that's where I took the profit. But, yeah, if you if you had more patience than uh, than us, Token and myself, then 130.30 is the one I mentioned yesterday. Now, at this point, the breakout could be happening or it could be, of course, a bouncing spot. Whether this is a correction, looking at this structure, let me take off these fibs. It could be a bit annoying to look at all these levels. Let's remove it and go to a blank version. All right. So whether this upside is a correction or not, uh, or if it's just a, a new kind of bullish momentum, remains to be seen, I think, still. This is, of course, looking corrective. But if it manages to break above this resistance, in a way, manages to push above uh, this zone, it could start an impulse as well. I, I don't want to necessarily rule it out. And that has to, has to do with the fact that we're at a very big support level looking at the daily chart. All right? When you look at the daily chart, when you start looking at the structure here, um, I think that this could easily turn out to be a triangle like this. All right? So from that point of view, this could be a very heavy bounce spot. And it could lead to price going at least up to the 50 fib of this last swing high, swing low. That 50 fib around 131.75 at least, and it could go to 132.50, 133.25 as well. If you look at this structure, maybe on the four hour chart, but then zoomed in. All right, like this. Uh, it looks to me, let me get rid of this for a moment, this mini terminal. It, uh, it looks like me that this is one swing here. This is another swing or, or leg. This is another leg. So that's three legs, right? Now, this is the fourth leg. Is this fourth leg part of the bigger correction? And are we building a complex kind of triangle corrective zone? Or is this the start of, of the uh, continuation, I should say, of the, the downtrend we've seen on the pound, of course, when Brexit occurred, right? Right here, this big fall. At this moment, I would be inclined to say that this is probably more of a correction. Uh, now, it looks very impulsive, so don't get me wrong. It could be an impulsive wave. But for the moment, I would lean towards ABC. Now, I do have, when looking at my wave analysis, I do have it also showing 1, 2, 3, uh, and this could be four and five. So that is definitely something to, to reckon with. And it could occur, and it all depends on how price is going to move right here and how it responds towards resistance levels like this and towards resistance levels like, like this trend line. Plus, of course, will it be able to break through support eventually? If it breaks through support, then yes, it's probably going to be a downtrend after that, right? If it breaks through this uh, resistance level then shows a higher low then I think we're going to see a bigger wavy up in here up in 131.75 at least uh, Ron has some information about uh, the awesome oscillator so let me show show that he is talking about divergence and good to see you Hamad great that you're here is this the first time you're joining by any chance by coincidence I'm not sure um so we see here, okay, cool. So we see here divergence between these bottoms. So that's one divergence indeed. But if we compare these legs, right? Let's compare this leg to this leg here. We see that the, we have a higher low and we have a higher low so far. So that's just in sync. Ah, uh, Ron, no, I know that uh, that was meant for Hamad, Ron, that uh, question if, if he's here for the first time. Ron, I, I definitely know that, I've, of course, definitely seen you uh, in these webinars more often, absolutely. So, yeah, Ron, that's a good observation. There is divergence between, uh, between these bottoms, indeed. That could lead to some correction, that, as we're seeing right now. That was also the reason why uh, I was bullish. Despite the down move, I was bullish and looking for longs here or upon the break. Now, 
looking, by the way, one more note. Remember yesterday we were saying like if we get a good bullish candle here, that could be a good breakout. But if it's a wick, we might see the retracement. That was another thing to look out for that, you know, another reason why we're getting a bigger correction uh, and didn't get the breakout right away back then. All right. So it was trying to push through this trend line at the time, but it failed. And uh, as you can see with the wicks, and we got the bigger retracement. Anyhow, was one of the reasons why here was good for lungs was because of the fact that we have divergence and we could expect price to go back to 144 EMA indeed, which is a target for such a divergence. Let's put it on the chart. There we go. So that's the target, the minimum target, but it could go further than that. As you can see, confluence there with the resistance and the moving average. All right. So I think there's a good chance it will break. I think there's a good chance we might see a higher, we will see a higher low and a, an ABC structure here up for wave E. That's what I think is the most likely. Now, if it fails, uh, if price by any chance does not make that higher low, let's put a fit from here, for here, from here to here and talk about the scenario that if price turns at 130.80, 130.75. If it makes a rising wedge like this and then starts to show impulse to the downside and then starts a correction like this, there's a good chance that actually this is a wave four, not a wave E. We might break out of this channel. Okay, that's fine, but it could still be a wave E if price stops at the 38, shows a lot of momentum here, and then starts to build a bull flag, a uh, bear flag. In that case, I think there's a good chance of downside continuation. You see that? However, if price moves up to the 38.2 fib, then starts to show kind of a, a slow correction, then it looks more like a bull flag, then I think that this will turn out to be a higher low. And next impulse would confirm that higher low, and I think we could see price move up uh, to, uh, to, these, to, to these levels like this. Actually, I'll move the fib in that case higher to, to put it on the entire swing high, swing low. And we'll probably see price move up to the 38 and then later on to the 55th. So this is basically combining patterns, support of resistance, momentum and trend, trying to make a trade plan from that and trying to assess what, what is the path of, uh, of least resistance for, for price. All right. And that, Based on that, make a roadmap and try to trade that roadmap. So how would I trade it? Well, basically here, like yesterday, we'll be looking for a breakout candle on, but not on the hourly, but on the four hour chart. And that has to do with this trend line. The trend line is quite, you know, well, it's first of all, a trend line that is used on this four hour chart. So that's one reason I would like to see a four hour breakout candle. Yesterday we were looking at a one hour structure Hence, looking at a one-hour trend line. So from my perspective, four-hour breakout candle here uh, with a close into low, sorry, close into high uh, could be the signal of a continuation higher. All right, so that is the trigger. How would I want to trade it, though? There could be two, several ways. First of all, is it basically a correction of that candle? It could be the candle itself could be the entry, the correction of the candle, or... You know, we could look at the 50 minute chart or the one hour chart. And once that four hour candle closes, sorry, there we go. Once that four hour candle closes, uh, basically uh, look for a pattern here, some kind of bull flag on a 50 minute chart and a break of that. All right, so that would be one way. If by any chance on this 50-minute chart I see a close in reverse and it flies down like this and we got a break below this low and we got a lower low on the 15, I'm not bullish anymore, right? Because then, as I said, if anything, it's actually looking like we'll see downside. So we cannot break below 130 anymore. Otherwise, you know, this, this upside potential is, is, is over. Even if we see a four-hour, let's say we see a four-hour bullish candle, here, uh, but the next candle flies below this this support level. Well, then it's yeah, you know, that bullish case is is out of the window. This was then a false breakout. 
All right. If we do get a bullish candle and price corrects like this, but stays above the trend line and stays above this support, there's a good chance it will bounce. On our hourly chart, uh, it, uh, yeah, basically it's retesting these resistance levels, but I think really the better chart is to look at the four hour. If the four hour candle, by the way, is not bullish, but turns out into a big exhaustion wick, or it turns out to be bearish like this, well, then in that case, it could definitely be a bounce. And uh, I would think about maybe shorting the break of the low. Um, I'm not sure yet, to be honest. I, I didn't make a decision on that as yet. So I'm thinking now with you. But yeah, I would be definitely with the bearish cap looking at this chart. And I would be prob maybe probably looking at the five-minute chart. Because I would probably expect that if, if it turns out to be a huge bearish candle here on the four-hour chart, I would expect price to have made an impulse like that. What I would probably what we'll see is that Alice is going to dive down like this. Probably want to see kind of an ABC correction back up. See this oscillator go back to the zero line on the five-minute chart. Look for here uh, for price to turn back at, back down at 130 probably and uh, continue lower. That's an intraday kind of... Um, structure all right so that was a long discussion there sorry about that but let's move on all right Paul we talked about the break yesterday did anyone trade the the euro downside I was bearish on the euro either upon uh, price hitting basically uh, the zigzag here if it would make a zigzag if it would show uh, bullish candles here then I would, would wait for that bullishness to finish up in here or I said if there's any signs of exhaustion at these fibs or upon the break so basically we didn't get this one but we got the exhaustion here at the 50 fib we got the breakout candle here and another breakout candle there so there were could have been potentially I guess a couple of ways but just on this chart potentially three ways to trade it um, in my view at least did anyone manage to catch the, the euro dollar? And Urius will, we can take a look at the DAX. Uh, let me just finish this euro dollar and we'll take a look at that. Anyone managed to get the euro dollar? Downside. Great. Dogen managed to catch it. What what price level did you manage to, uh, to get, Dogen? So we got the good break here. And uh, of course, after the momentum, uh, at the end of the day, we had a bit of a bounce kind of a dead cat, dead cat bounce in a way, isn't it? Because uh, it was just the end of the market day. So it's it's profit grabbing. It's traders exiting the market with, with the, you know, the, the money, the pips they have in the pocket. And um, so, yeah. That's why uh, we saw a bit of a rally there. Uh, let's see. I'm a bit confused with the numbers. Okay. So I, you're talking about shorts, Dogon? Just, just, just trying to confirm that. Okay, cool. Nice job. So it looks like uh, various levels there. Uh, on average, though, uh, a bit lower than I was hoping for for you. But... Uh, But let's see, let's talk about now because that could help you with those trades. Looking at this structure, I think that uh, at this moment, it seems likely that price will continue down to 11.75. So there's not much space left, I think. Okay, I understand, Dogen. Yeah, got it. But, uh, so you know, that I don't think it's interesting to short right now, to be honest. Um, so I'm staying out of this, 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 this market. If you're still in, by any chance from yesterday, I would be probably, if I were you, let me say it this way, right? I would be aiming at 1180 probably. Now, it's not to say it could not continue lower after that. It's just that I think that looking at this structure, there's a good chance that price will bounce uh, for a correction here. You know how the market is. It's a highly, looking at this four-hour 
chart. It's a highly uh, corrective chart. It is a complex chart. And there are a lot of complex uh, structures here. So when that happens, I think that there's a higher chance that price will continue with that complexity. Eventually, we'll get a clean breakout. We'll see a push uh, in, in the direction one way or another. At this point, I wouldn't count on that all too soon. So as soon as we get into this 111.75 zone, this purple line actually, I think that it could be a bouncing spot. With we, I, might, I would expect an ABC zigzag basically up to around this level where we might see this head and shoulders play out. That level is around 112.50. Doesn't have to get all the way there, roughly speaking. And 112.50, the head and shoulders level. Uh, could be the bouncing spot where price then retests the bottom and then probably breaks down to 110.50. Um, in other words, I think we're going to get a bigger ABC zigzag here. So this is the A part. I think this will be the B part, and we're going to see a C part here. We had multiple ABCs already. As you can see, we had it uh, here. We had it here uh, and here. And recently, of course, yesterday we were looking at the end of here. And uh, or trying to, yeah, basically we're analyzing like it's most likely finished and looking for shorts up in here right after it turned. All right, so you see kind of four legs here. I think we can expect another ABC zigzag uh, in the upcoming movement. But that means that I think that wave A does not have a lot of space. Now, don't get me wrong, obviously, uh, it could fall a bit further than I expect. It could go to 111.50. Who knows? It could fly to parity by tomorrow. We never, we don't, no one knows, right? But in all likelihood, uh, I think that 111.75, 111.50 will be a bouncing spot. I think that probability is, is decent, and I'm not going to trade right in front of that. I'd rather wait for a corrective ABC to complete here like this. I would wait for this to finish, this to finish, and this to finish. What I'm most interested in is shorting it when B, when the red C and the B, the blue B are finished, because that's when I would expect the blue C to start, and I think that has the most potential there. In that case, so uh, I think that there's a good potential of, uh, well, Let's take a look at what it is now. Okay, it's been falling 90 pips. So, let's see. Let me go to the hourly again. Well, it could fall to 55. It could fall to this target. So it might still be worth it. Let me look at lower time frames in just a second. Maybe if there's some hook back here, there could be a smaller part here to trade still before it makes the bigger ABC bounce. Um, and then to turn around here for uh, the downside. Obviously, I like this turn here at the, at the start of B, uh, sorry, the end of B, the start of C the most. But there could be maybe, let's say, the last push within this A could still be maybe worth looking at. All right, so looking at my FIP sequence levels, basically, uh, before we really can expect some, some good downside, I think we need to break below this bottom. Then we can expect a bit more impulsiveness, I think. And let me calculate quickly. That's when I think we could see falls towards 110 and 109. All right, so here, bounce. Once again, sorry to repeat, but last, last time. And once we get to the start here, I think that we'll see five waves like this. All right, specifically uh, this part right in here, right, and here, those will be the most impulsive. Those would be best 
spots as a continuation. This would be the best turn. Well, anyhow, uh, let's talk quickly about this part now, it, because I don't want to underestimate it. It could could continue here and uh, make a fall. I think, though, that I would like to see a pattern after the pattern. I'm not sure which time frame. One second. You see, we're just a bit unlucky. We're a bit late uh, with this webinar. Of course, the webinar time is always fixed. So, but. Uh, it, it seems to be right at the bottom. I'm not sure if this this is not the best moment, I think. I mean, if you were looking at the charts, then obviously this would have been a neat kind of way to, to trade it. This little break right in here, for instance, right? Somewhere in here, that could have been a good short as we break uh, below the structure and these bottoms, right? That would still be a good way to trade it because then there's still a good potential here until we get down to at least this target or this target. Now that's a bit late. We're just a bit, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we looked at the pound first, but uh, and this this break happened actually before our webinar, anyhow. So, but okay. Now at this point, I think that I would look at the five minute chart probably. It's the only way, and look for kind of a bear flag here, and maybe see one more continuation. If there is a flat correction, it could still be okay to trade. But if there's any impulsiveness to the upside then probably the wave A is finished here. Okay, that's my view on your dollar. Let's go to the DAX and then we'll take a look at the Kiwi and then we'll take a look at the dollar yen and the other yens. All right, DAX, uh, I think someone was asking for the DAX. Let me double check. Yes, DAX, yes. So I was looking at this this morning and I was thinking that it could be an ABC zigzag. So that's why I have the fib from here to here. And I was expecting price to go to these fibs. Now, it bounced at the 23.6 fib. I did not expect that. I didn't expect the bounce to happen so soon. So it's really not following what, what I was wanted to, to, to analyze and trade. I was expecting here a correction like this to the 61.8 or the 50 fib and then a bounce up to the minus 61.8 target. That seemed like a good trade to me. Now, it didn't happen. So those things occur. It actually bounced earlier, 23.6. It's already at the minus 272 target. So uh, it is the bullishness, but it's not exactly how I was thinking. Now, part of the bullishness is derived from the fact that, you know, looking at the structure on the four-hour chart, uh, it, it looks like we're at a bouncing spot. It looks corrective like this. As you can see, All right, so all in all, we got momentum to the upside. This looks like a correction. If we would add the awesome escalator, you'd see that momentum here, and price has gone back, or the escalator has gone back to the zero line. No divergence between these tops here, as you can see, and here's back to the zero line. We've got three green bars here indicating that this momentum, this this kind of uh, leg or swing uh, is most likely finished. We got three green bars after the dip below the zero line and went back to the zero line. So price is retesting this bottom and this support level. So yeah, I think there's a good chance of a bounce. Yesterday was ended with a wick. So this is a, a bar where we see uh, some reasonable support kick in, I would say. Um, so it looks like a good bouncing spot. Now, how far can this go? Well, I was thinking originally a zigzag, right? But now I have to reevaluate it because we, we didn't get a, a deep pullback. So let me take a look again. Um, let me quickly count here. It depends how far this goes. It could be a leading diagonal, but then in that case, it shouldn't go too far. 
you see this is shorter than this first part, which means that this fifth part, if it's shorter, it could be a leading diagonal. But if it isn't, then it is a it is a correction. Let me quickly calculate. Ten twenty six. Maybe it's not the shortest. It's very close. I would need to, to calculate precisely. Uh, maybe this is a tad longer than the first part. Actually, the three is a bit longer than the first. Maybe. So it could be a, an ABC like this, or five wave. You know, from a market structure point of view, and we might see an ABC and then and then a continuation up. Um, I think that at that moment, at this moment, probably is the the main thing to look for. Now, I, you know, I don't want to underestimate this potential push either. It could push further than I expect and just keep rising like this. So one way to guard against that is that if it makes a triangle like this here, or if it makes a correction like this, the next break on a lower time frame could be an intraday push for continuation there. But right here, I wouldn't trade it. So I'm bullish um, either after, either intraday if there is a correction and one more push or if it makes an ABC and I would expect another push here at least to test this resistance and probably break, but it could break after a bounce and then break next time. Okay, let's look at the Kiwi. All right, uh, yesterday we were talking about 73.20, I think Nenad was a spending order. Well, I don't know how Nenad does it, but looks like he was very much spot on because price went to 73.30. Now, I, I said I would like to see some confirmation. You know, I like confirmations. So I uh, prefer to wait for some candle reaction to it. So from, from my perspective, either a clear bearish candlestick pattern or at least two candles going in the opposite direction uh, are signals of that. That would be here, in this case, on the hourly chart, two candles. Four-hour candle uh, didn't have it, really, um, to be honest. There was, I don't think, any clear signal there. On a 50-minute chart, all right, there we go. From a time factor point of view, you can see that basically this was already a struggle, but one could see it as a, a bull flag. You see, the thing is that that's when patterns sometimes fail, uh, is when there's clear or strong resistance nearby or strong support nearby. Then in that case, those patterns that look like continuation patterns uh, have a, a tendency to, to fail and actually break to the opposite side. So if you look at the number of candles, you know, by candle rule of, five to six candles, one, two, three, four, five. Six candles still bullish, but the seventh is bearish. The seventh is the most important because the sixth is still bullish. The seventh is bearish. Failure to post a higher high means that this upside is over. The leg is completed, the swing is finished, and uh, we're probably gonna see a correction. So that would have been another way to short it right there. All right, so we got a good impulse, we got a correction, both a bear flag, and then we get another break of that triangle basically or bear flag and uh, you get another swing down so how about now what is going on right now so I think that we're still in this this downside we have this is the fourth candle so there's plenty of time still to keep pushing if it wants to now let's put on the uh, awesome oscillator quickly All right, there is no divergence at this moment. This last swing is a bit stronger. So from this perspective, it looks like a, a correction here. This starts to look like a new downside. So it looks like we're in a, in a wave five here, I would say. 
And uh, that could be of a bigger one, two, three. Um, now, let's take a look at the higher time frame. It's always more important indeed than the lower time frames. So, in a sense, because that's where we get, you know, the overall direction. That's what I meant. And, of course, the lower time frames are important to, to see if you, if you get a confirmation of that, let's say, the analysis that you do on higher time frames, right? It, 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 works, it works both ways because we might have, and I, you know, we might do analysis on the lower and the higher time frames and get an idea, okay, the, the structure looks like this. I expect a bounce here. But where will we see the first bounce happen on the lower time frames? So, you know, they, they kind of support each other in this way. Uh, let me, uh, hang on, uh, let's see, charts are not working at the moment. Does anyone hear me? Testing one, two, three. Okay, you hear me. Great. Sorry about that. Perfect. Thank you so much. So let me uh, see. It's just a bit uh, slow in responding, I guess. Well, anyhow, if you see my chart, then let's talk about this daily. Uh, in the meantime, I'll okay. I'll try to see if I can speed it up. So, yeah, looking at the uh, the, the larger time frame here, the daily, it is not as easy as it seems. I think yes, we might have a break here, for instance, or or here. Okay, it's responding. Maybe I wasn't okay. Good, it works now. So it's not as clear. Yes, we have a break here. But the break has been very choppy so far. And it is, I think, a bit tricky, this one. There is divergence here between these tops. That's all good. There was a good momentum here. This part is, has been slow, though, so far, I would say. And this could turn into a bigger correction. What I'm a bit keeping in mind is that this could just turn into a bigger correction, a complex correction like this, before it turns and makes that, that bigger uh, momentum move down. All right, that's something I think uh, that is something to be aware of. So if I put a fib, let me put a fib from here to here. All right, 71.87. I think we need to break, no, let me change, change it a bit, 71.80ish, all right? Otherwise, this could still be a correction within a bigger correction. Complex corrections are, are, are not easy. Uh, and I think that's what basically frustrates any trader that tries to do Elliott Wave theory. Now, I think that you don't have to, to, to look at wave structure, to look at market structure, you don't have to necessarily intensively use wave analysis. But if you know uh, a bit about you know, uh, the, the basics, you can use it already, Let's just like I do. I think that what I'm doing now is more or less kind of using it at times when it makes sense, uh, but not using the wave wave analysis as the primary thing, only when it's usable and easy to see and in combination with other things like patterns, support or resistance and trends. I think that that is probably the best way for traders to use it because it focuses on practical use usage, focuses on really using it for trading decisions. And obviously, if, if you're a big wave fan uh, or if you like to uh, always, you know, use the, the wave, see what the wave count is, that's great. But if you're not a big wave fan, then this is still more of a practical way of using it. Complex corrections are the most complicated because when you look at, you know, traders putting charts out there with, the, with wave analysis, often it goes wrong, I would say. That's, yeah, it doesn't look as neat or it just looks imbalanced 
when complex corrections are, are put on there because legs and swings are combined that just don't make that much sense in my view at least. They're kind of like trying to make a fit within using wave analysis. They're trying to fit things together that really have no place to be put together, right? You might get stuff connections, swing connections that you that are just odd, you know. Um, for instance, uh, let's take a look. Um, let's see. I can't give a good example here, uh, but anyhow, it doesn't matter that much, but. You see my point, I think. So this, I think, let's take a look at this part here. All right, I must say that this looks pretty impulsive. Let's zoom even a bit more. All right, I think that there is a chance that this, this wave is the first start of a of a push so it could be that this is just uh that this is the, f the finish of of a b this is a and we're down for going for c all right i was a bit hesitant because of this kind of funky little um the movement like this but if i analyze this part it could be uh it looks pretty impulsive and if this is an ABC correction, it shouldn't be that impulsive, right? It could be a zigzag, though, of course. But it doesn't look like that at the moment. Now, of course, there's always the potential for this to be a wave A right here. In that case, we had a wave 1, 2, 3. This was a 4, and this is a 5 to finish A. And in that case, we might see still a pretty hefty bounce here to finish B still. So that's something that could still happen as well. So we have to see how price responds to this bottom. If this bottom breaks though, we should see a pretty pretty sturdy move down and that price should accelerate. I would expect acceleration towards the 70, 70, 80. So let me see what the original question was actually. Seventy-two, seventy-three, twenty. Short. That looks good. Great job. Excellent. So I think it would be a, even better if price makes this break. There could be the fifth wave right here. That would, if we get a kind of a correction like this, I think that uh, we should see follow through. Then after that, an ABC correction. If you have a stop loss at seventy-three forty, uh, let's put a fib from here to here. And see where 73.40 is. Oh, that's above this top. Yeah, that should be fine. That looks good to me, in my view at least. It could be even at break even. 88.6 fibers, so 73.20. So at this moment, I don't see any trades. I think that this is not worth trading here. Uh, but if it here finishes an ABC correction and starts to show struggle at uh, this trend line, for instance, right here, and at the, if you could put a fib from here to here, right? And, if, and fib also, if it makes a move here, makes a correction here, put a fib from here to here, right? Look for the targets up in here. That could be a very good spot to, uh, to short as well. All right, dollar yen. Nothing changed since yesterday. I'm still bullish. I talked about the potential for inverted head and shoulders here. It actually went down all the way there after it failed to break this trend line. All right, so basically did find that bounce at the 78.6 fib. Now can it break and make a rally finally? This is the 78.6 fib after an 88.6 fib bounce. So if it doesn't here, then I guess it won't. Uh, because at this point, there are no more excuses <laughs> remaining. You know, it, it cannot, uh, or yeah, it's difficult to imagine 
um, it moving lower and then still bouncing higher. We're already retesting the deep fib after the deep fib, so there's not much space to maneuver before it uh, has to, I guess, break or, or bounce or do something. The space is getting tighter and tighter. So this trend line is coming in, sinking in, and we've had already multiple hits off of the support level. So from my perspective, uh, obviously longs as the retracement here yesterday made sense. That has, has happened. If you're in that, great. I would uh, probably just move it to stop loss to underneath this bottom. If you're not in that, then I'll be looking for a four hour candle that breaks this trend line. And I'll be looking for a daily candle that breaks this trend line, same as yesterday, or daily candle that breaks this support. All right, pound yen yesterday, bullish day. And uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Great to hear that. And uh, let's see, I'm thinking what you mean with the second part, though. Or you mean the, are you referring to the, to Yosip's webinar on Monday, perhaps? Joseph had a, a webinar on Monday. If you're interested in, okay, great. If you're interested in a FIB strategy, simple FIB strategy, only using the 50 FIB uh, and otherwise only using price action, um, you can check that out. Let me show you where the link is, actually. I have it uploaded now. That is not it. Sorry about that. I'll find it in the meantime. Anyhow, this pound yen, I'll get back to that. Pound yen uh, here, triple bottom, or not, yeah, maybe triple bottom, but anyhow, support level, daily candle that was bullish, small candle though, uh, relatively compared to this downside. Is this swing over or is it just this small pullback for continuation? Well, consider if the, today is a bullish candle, I think there's a higher chance that we will make a bounce here and we'll probably follow the pound. So we'll probably wait for that. It's, I think, going to follow the pound and might follow the yen. If the yen starts to move up and the pound starts to bounce, the pound yen could, could move up substantially. So it isn't a downtrend, uh, but it is showing signs that it's that it's broken or about to break, depending on what time frame you're looking at. Honestly, I think this trend line is probably the most important here, this one, not even the four hour one. We already have a higher low here, just like the yen, inverted head and shoulders. So I think if we get a good candle here, this this one hour candle, it might be enough because this looks a bit like a rising wedge, but if it breaks that rising wedge, uh, then um, that's it. And we could see, I would say, a momentum here to the upside. So I would be more inclined for upside, but I'm going to wait for this four hour candle, if not a one hour candle, if not a four hour candle even actually, right here. For our candle, preferably pushing above the pink, that would be great. Like this, with the close near the high, that could be a great trigger, I think. Uh, here again, I'm not that that big of a fan at the moment. It is also respecting these deep fibs here, so this could turn out to be a bigger ABC zigzag. I mean, my view in Monday was that. This is an A, we're going down for B, we're going up for C. Now we got the bounce here, but it didn't didn't continue for to the target. And we got a, a bigger correction down to uh, the deeper fib. So it's, it still could be valid, I think. I don't think anything really changed. I think it could still be that ABC. Now how to trade it, in my view? Well, let's take a look at the four hour chart. One, two, okay, bullish candles here.
I'm not sure to be honest. <laughs> it uh, this is looking quite choppy and corrective. I I don't have any particular ideas about catching this. I mean, not not. Let's take a look at euro pound. Maybe we'll get more information about the euro uh, versus the pound. Um, all right, euro pound. So yesterday we were talking about potential double top. And looked pretty strong bearish candle indeed. Yesterday we also said Joseph's strategy, you know, we got a lower low. Joseph's strategy said we got a lower low, so I think it was on the Europon, wasn't it? Do you remember, Ron? I remember we have to work on that. I thought it was the Europon where we said, okay, um, I don't have the fib on it anymore. Maybe I I probably removed it when I was looking at it after our webinar, but Okay, Ron doesn't remember. I I have a feeling it was zero pound and that we're looking for a move to the 50 fib with the stop loss here and acceleration down, but I'm not 100% sure. If anyone remembers, please let me know. I would like that confirmation, but uh, at the moment, yeah, that, it did happen in any case. As you can see, we got the zigzag or whatever, the, the, the bearish momentum. And now, well, I think that uh, this is looking interesting for a turnaround. We got bearish candle yesterday. We got good momentum here. We got potential double top. So when we look at the weekly, I think that there's a good chance that this candle will turn out bearish. In that case, I think it's a double top. And I think we might see price fall down to at least to retest this bottom. All right, then we will stay. We're in this sideways zone at this moment, as you can see. All right, so if this weekly candle closes like this, I think we got a good chance of maybe a retracement, right? And but then a retest at this bottom. From a daily perspective, we already broke yesterday's low. I think from a lower time perspective, the most interesting trade was obviously here at this fib. At this moment, I think we finished five waves. So what I would be personally looking for is the ABC zigzag to the upside and looking for, hang on, here, looking for price to make an ABC back up to here. Uh, we'll, I'll put a fib from here to here, right? And look for price to finish at, uh, at these fibs. Alrighty. Uh, regarding uh, the forex market, any other currency pairs that you want to take a look at, or regarding stock indices or commodities, anything you want to take, like like to uh, review? All right. Ron mentions pound odd. Uh, yeah, I had this uh, this template on. Basically, I'm not trading it until it reaches the uh, the long-term moving averages, or I'm not shorting it at the very least. A lot of divergence here, uh, a massive push. I think that this is not the right moment to trade it anymore uh, to the downside. I would like to see some bigger retracement. Uh, now, it might be worth a reversal, though, due to all the factors that we just mentioned. Um, it is also slowing down, as you can see. It is close to this bottom, just like head and shoulders here, just like all the pound pairs. It seems like they're positioning themselves into a bounce potential here. And this is rounding a bit. You see that rounding like this? I would not be surprised if it rounds up and gets back to uh, to a higher high here. So the earliest way I think would be uh, if it, uh, if we get a break above the 21 EMA and a push back to it and a bounce like that. I think that could be maybe the uh, pretty risk pretty lower, let's say on the lower spectrum of risk in comparison to reversal trades. Re reversal trades are always a bit riskier. I think that trading it like this could make it a bit less risky. Uh, if you're looking at uh, Joseph's strategy, uh, then 
you could put a fit from here to here and you got a 50 foot bounce. Now I'm not, I'm not sure. What do you think, Ron? When you, you, you watched this webinar, right? I know that he's looking for a, uh, a lower low, right? In a downtrend, an uptrend and a higher high in uptrend. But I would still consider this to be the critical high. So I'm not sure if this really qualifies as a higher high compared to this level. What do you think? So I guess that is something to think about. So from that perspective, uh, okay, Ron agrees with me. Great, so there's confluence there. It could still be, don't get me wrong though, I think that um, although Yosef's system probably did not qualify in this case, looking at the structure, I think that this is probably an A or a 1. This is a correction, as you can see, and probably a 2 or a B. And I think that we are going up. I think there's a good chance for 3 or C. Now, A or 1 just did not push up to break the resistance and therefore qualify for that particular system. However, I think the structure, the idea behind the system, the, the, the idea behind the structure however, is valid for, for this case. Um, so from a discretionary point of view, I do think that uh, it is uh, good. Now, so from that point of view, this could have been one way of trading that. Uh, the other way, as I said, would be to wait for price to basically break above the 21 EMA, kind of go back to that 21 EMA and wait for the bounce here, for instance, or, or the continuation here and uh, take that next leg up. All righty. How about, let's take a look at that odd New Zealand, by the way. We were talking about the odd New Zealand, about going along, was in here, right? Uh, the, the, the bull flag, basically, back then, remember that here I said look for a bull flag because it's probably going to be a wave three and depending on how, you know, if it is a wave three or a wave C, it could push quite far. So yeah, it is, it turned out to be a wave three. Look at that significant push all the way past 105. And we had another flag here. So yeah, that this is a wave three. All right. As you can see, and that's how we, we, we were analyzing that live and that's how we, we managed to kind of catch part of that wave three. So that's cool. I think. And this is typical, of course, for a wave four, right? You can look at that very weak correction, big momentum here, weak momentum here, strong price movement here, weak price movement here. And uh, we had the break, unfortunately, already a few hours ago. Unfortunately, we didn't look at this yesterday. But this looks like a good breakout. Maybe some of you managed to catch the continuation of, uh, of this triangle. Uh, let's take a look at oil. Still in the triangle, I think that still looking for a break, probably to the upside. This looks like an impulse here. This looks like a correction. Looking for, I would think, a break candle here for upside. All right, regarding the webinar um, that Josip was talking about, his trend hunting strategy, uh, the recording is now up on the Admiral Markets YouTube channel from Croatia. It's also up on Elite Currency YouTube channel and it's also available on Elite Currency website. So you can find it on Admiral Markets and our Elite Currency website. Uh, here's the link. So if you're looking at the recording, you can pause it and, or just go to, uh, to the website, EliteCurrency.com, click on the blog and you'll find it the very first and you'll see here the video. If you're interested in not only the system, but uh, you know an extra package, uh, including uh, some courses, some 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 extra bonuses with Admin Markets, you can click here for the details and sign up to trade with Admin Markets. Okay. Alrighty. All right, folks. Any other questions? So. Anything, so as you can see, in, in my view, just to wrap up this kind of analysis part, so patterns, trend, support and resistance, make up the analysis, then that basically leads to understanding the path of least resistance, which gives us a roadmap, 
right? That, or that's the same kind of thing. That's the same, just two different words. That in turn provides, gives me the opportunity to set up decision zones. Where do I want to trade it? If I want to trade it at all. And if I have that, if I know where I want to trade it in which direction, because I've analyzed, you know, the structure and I think, okay, at that point, there's a good chance of a bounce and it could, there's a good chance it might also not only bounce, but, you know, travel a, a decent distance then at that decision zone, right, looking for triggers as a confirmation, not to, to, to trade any falling knives. You know, sometimes traders uh, start out, they, they put a fit from here to here, uh, and they look at price, it's falling, it reaches their 61.8, they take a trade, and put the stop loss below what they think is the, you know, the, the fib low, and this happens. So triggers are one way of doing that. Uh, confluence taking pen taking market orders sorry taking uh, market orders at triggers is one way of doing that uh, using pending orders but at a very strong level of confluence would be another right not to, to take too many pendings like this or take bigger fibs this is a this is catching a falling knife uh, otherwise anything else folks I don't have anything in mind that that I wanted to show you, but oh yeah, the dollar cat. We were talking about the dollar cat. Oh, the Aussie still. Sorry, let's take a look at those. So we have a bearish candle yesterday on the dollar cat. Let's put a fib from here to here, right? Thirty-eight point two fib. Remember that is a, a resistance spot, but not necessarily the turning spot. All right, because this correction could easily expand. Uh, I think if we dissect this, this could easily be. A correction this could be a correction we're in a new correction here and it could easily push up to the 50 fib for instance so if it breaks above the 38 I think we know what the next target is the 50 this could be a bit of a bouncing spot but not necessarily a turning spot and you can see pretty strong momentum up pretty weak correction down so far I don't think this is a great shorting spot. I see momentum up. I see price more or less going. I see higher highs, higher lows. I see price more or less going sideways. So if I would trade it, the only way I can trade it to the downside is if it breaks at least through this support level with some momentum, shows a bear flag probably. Upside is not that easy either though, but uh, probably the best is a daily candle, strong bullish daily candle, posting breaking above this resistance. And I think we get it up and move against uh, up to the 50. Might not happen, might not happen soon. It could either go sideways like this, or it might make that bigger correction if it breaks through this pink. It might make uh, a retest of this bottom like this and then bounce. For the moment, I'm, I'm in the waiting mode. Uh, otherwise, the Aussie still. I'm not trading it. Was maybe a good long right in here, but not now. Too close to resistance. All right, pound USD looking like it's not able to break. But once again, looking at this four hour candle in my opinion, this could just be pre-London or, or, I mean, the choppy start of London and who knows, it could just do like this and then still end up here, make a downside and then make a substantial upside. London can always be choppy like this at the start with the pound. So four hour, four hour candles is key in my opinion.
euro dollar 15 minute chart. Uh, let's see how it corrects here once again. If this is a weak correction, I would expect follow through. If it is showing, however, momentum like this, then there's divergence in play. And in that case, we will see probably a bigger correction upside. In that case, intraday long here might even make sense. Or uh, finish, or letting this ABC finish, as I already said earlier, for a turnaround here. Dollar yen. Uh, Bob was asking about dollar yen. I'm not sure. No, Bob is uh, is not here anymore. Okay, no problem. So, yeah, that wraps it up for today, folks. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, this is basically what I'll be looking for uh, during the trading day. So, let's see. Um, hope to see you in tonight's webinar with Nenet. We got. Uh, Tomorrow, next week, of course, again, strategy and market. Tonight, then it looks at losing trades and drawdowns. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at uh, your first steps when you start trading. Hope to see you in those webinars, and see you all soon. Cheers.